Good morning. Happy Easter. We're still in the Easter season for the next four to five weeks. Are you in that spirit still? Yeah, let's hear it. It's okay to give God praise and thanks. So good morning, people of faith gathered in the building of 327 Franklin Street or 200 Parker or whatever they give us. But I welcome you and I pray that as we worship today on this second Sunday of Easter, that you will, that the life of Easter and the surprise of Easter still remains in your hearts as we worship today and that the celebration continues because the Lord is risen. The Lord is risen indeed. So I just want you to know that you are warmly welcomed uh, to worship. Your presence enhances all that we do. And we are so blessed. And I hope you understand how blessed we are. And those blessings all come from God. So again, welcome. Um, and now I welcome Olivia, who I get the privilege to serve with in ministry today, and, and who God has chosen to serve as your liturgist. Good morning. I am Olivia Lehman. I'm your liturgist for today's service. It is great seeing you all on the Eclipse weekend. Yeah. If you have any announcements, please move up to the front of the church. Um, I have actually one quick announcement. So this weekend is opening night and closing night of Frozen. Uh, tickets are $6 at the door at Watertown High School. The time is 7 o'clock on Friday the 12th and Saturday the 11th. And it's a great show, and she's working hard along with a great cast. And guess what today is? My first one. So your pastor plans to eat all he can of the French toast. Well, and there's, oh, oh, and pancakes. So if I have to ditch by 12.22, wait, I'm out of here because I'm going to go eat. <laughs> the Salvation Army. <laughs> so um, I want to share that that's, that is going on today and, and it supports that, so. Go ahead, Olivia. Okay. Is there any other announcements? Okay. We're going to have our prelude, Praise the Lord the Almighty, with the Asbury Bells.
Loving and creating God, we know that uh, there's so much chaos and division and war, hurt families, destruction, everywhere we turn. You know that uh, there's so much that is going on. And we pray this day for your peace. We pray for especially those who make decisions on our behalf, those who lead, and those who are trying to find ways for peace where others aren't listening. Be in their conversation, be in their ears, be in their listening, be in their speaking. And we pray especially for your presence upon those in our armed forces, especially those on standby, reservists, and, and others that uh, might be involved in conflict. Today we pray for peace because it's so brutal out in the world. Allow your Easter resurrection to enter the hearts of all those in the midst of this strife. And we especially pray for those in the uh, 10th Mountain Division that are in our backyard. We thank you for all that they do. We pray for your peace through your son's most precious name we pray. Amen. Please join me with a call to worship. Even in the midst of our questions, we will praise the Lord. Even with fear of what might be, we will praise God for God's mighty deeds according to God's surpassing greatness. We will come with faith that is growing in the spite of this. Praise God in song and dance. Let us offer worship and praise to the living God, the risen Jesus, and the Holy Spirit. Let everything that breathes praise God. Praise God. Now it is time for passing of the peace. Is it number 307? Christ is risen, church.
Please join me in the opening prayer. Life-giving, life-affirming, God, we come this morning remembering the joy of Easter while facing realities of this world. Fill us with hope of a new life that resurrection brings. Help us open our hearts to the never-ending, unconditional love of this Easter season. Be with us now in our time of worship and remain with us each and every day when we we'll walk in our paths with faith. Amen. Young disciples may come up or those who are young disciples at heart. If I stand, sit here and you all kind of gather around this way, can we do that? Because otherwise I feel like I'm, I'm not close enough to you guys. You guys got the box? Oh, my word. See, this is better. Then I can talk to you. And you know what? I'll even sit and relax myself. I probably won't be able to get up, but then you can all pull me up. Hold on. There. How are you? Happy Easter. It's still Easter, you know that, right? You didn't? That's what I wanted to talk to you about. And I even had a prop planned today. You know what a prop is? I wanted to show you something visually, because that's how I learn better than just by hearing. But it's been just one of those weeks. I think the, with the eclipse coming, it just wiped my mind and everything just... Uh, 
still in that Easter chaos, and I just forgot. Do you know what happens today in the story? Today in the story, it continues the journey of Easter. And you know what we talk about today? Disciples that were trying to hide out from all of the religious, all the events. They were scared and they tried to hide in a room. Guess who appeared? Jesus. And you know what? Somebody was missing out of that whole group. Do you know who it was? Judas? Nope. Jesus! It was Michael. Michael was not there. And let's pretend his name is really Thomas in the story. But we'll say Michael because he's here. Michael wasn't around when we all gathered and saw Christ in front of us. Because they tried to lock the doors and guess what? Jesus still got in. Somehow. But Michael wasn't there, but you all got to experience it. So when Jesus left, guess who finally showed up? Another night, Michael decided to join us. And we said, Michael, you should have seen it. He was fashionably late. And guess what? Guess who appeared again? Jesus. And guess who finally got to see him? Michael, because he heard you all talking about it and he didn't believe you at first. And then guess what? Jesus says, put your hands in my side from where he was nailed and, you know, on the cross. And then guess who finally believed? Michael. Or in the real story, Thomas, that's right. And that's why he's called Doubting Thomas. Yeah, but you know what I like about Thomas? Is he is somebody we can all relate to. He's one of those characters in the Bible, or even like Peter, that sometimes will ask the questions that we just wouldn't ask. You know, have you ever been in a position in class where maybe you wanted to find out uh, or ask a question about a math question to see if you have the right answer? No? Well, I have, and you hope to God somebody else asks that question so you don't have to. You're the best in math? Well, you know what? When I went to college, I went to an adult studies program because I went back to school. And so all the kids were like 10 years younger than me. I had grandma in my college class, and she was probably in her 60s. So we had a night class, and you know what? It was algebra. And the professor said, all right, and they went down all, she made us turn to a page and said, okay, everybody give me the answers. And they went down the line, all the seats, and I'm like, dear Jesus, don't get to me, don't get to me, don't get to me, Mr. Terrell. And you know, all the kids went, ugh, because they knew I was going to get the wrong answer. And you know, you're laughing, daughter, that's not allowed, you've got a report card coming, don't forget do you know what? There's always one that we hope will ask a question that we don't need to ask, but we should ask. So anyway, we're still in Easter, and I want you to know that Easter is lifelong for us. Every day should be Easter. You know, it's hard without the candy and the Easter bunnies and the eggs and the, the beauty of the sanctuary and the sunlight, but we have it today, don't we? Every day, we got to capture that feeling and keep it in our hearts. It's really hard to do when we look at people who are not nice, or you hear or see people who are unkind, and it can break your heart. It makes you forget there is a God that does good things. So promise me something. Can you all keep promises? Or are you promise breakers? At least you admit it. Do you know what? When I make a promise, I keep it. And here's what I want you to promise. That you will do your best to keep the Easter spirit alive. Do you think you can do that, Miss Angel? (laughs) I guess not. Yes, you will. Lily will. All right. So you know what? Why don't, uh, would somebody like to say a prayer before we open the treasure box? 
Did not it, oh, is this the new not it thing? Oh, I thought you were like doing something with your finger. Yeah. Or no. Wait, again. Here's the All right, I'm seeing a lot of fingers on their noses. That must be the new not it. All right, well, will somebody at least say amen when I'm done? Hallelujah. Okay. Dear God, thank you. Amen. What? That's all we had to say? Sometimes it's all you have to say. All right. In the box, you will find Valentine's chocolate. I still have Valentine's chocolate. From, this is from 1976. And then you got a fresh batch of another candy that I just got yesterday. Open her up. because I'm going to wake everybody up. No surprise there. I think this is dead. I don't know if you heard me. Um, maybe I need batteries, I think. It was dead? Oh, it's blinking, though. Okay. Well, you guys know. If I die, you know what to do. I'm in. There is no mission moment today. Now it is time to share our joys and concerns. You heard her. You heard Olivia, church. Let's surprise her with some joys. What do we got? All right, go, Kathy. Yesterday, I had the privilege of directing the Jefferson Lewis by County Elementary Band. And it was a it was a kind of a bittersweet moment for me. It was kind of a weird moment for me. And I told the kids this and I told the audience this. But I had first directed on that stage in 1977. And as I told them, you do the math. So it coming back to that school and directing on that stage once again was it was a wonderful joy for me and I'm very thankful to God that I was given that opportunity. That's nice. Thank you, Kathy, for doing that. You know, when you do things like Kathy or that kind of leadership, it is meaningful to see those milestones and to watch them come back and to fruition. All right, other joys. Okay. Over. Oh. Um, my joy is that um, my mom came home from the hospital. She had to go to the skilled part because she still has to do some more therapy, but um, I'm happy she's back there. Hopefully she'll get back in her apartment. Great news. Thank you for lifting that up. I was wondering if she was home. There's no, more sc there's no school tomorrow, so that's a good thing. <laughs> Yay! <clears throat> okay. This I'm glad this is spring and spring has sprung finally and I might order and this time this month I'm gonna order my Rentro stuff on my iPod and look like Rentro. Amen. Amen. Nice to go back in time. I'm gonna tag on to Kathy's joy. We had a joy yesterday also. Our granddaughter, who is the music director, choral director at Lowville School, she directed the choral group, and we're very proud of her. And you know what? Listening to Kathy, when she is 30 years maybe from now, maybe she'll say the same thing that Kathy did. I hope so. So true. Um, I have a joy also speaking on by county. I had the privilege yesterday of performing in the junior high by county. And um, yeah, I want to thank my director, Miss um, uh, Zara, I think. Say it, this one? Zara, Zara. Nice. 
It's nice to hear all these joys. And friends, you know, I know there's been a lot of talk about the eclipse. Some people are tired of it. I see things on, you know, around all the time about blah, all the hype and all the... Regardless of the totality, it's, a, it's an experience for all of us to, to share. So be out there with an awe of wonder and just enjoy it. It's still going to get dark. You know, just enjoy it. I see, so, you know, being the newbie up here, it's nice to hear all the excitement about it. And it's nice that we get the privilege of seeing it. So enjoy that, you know, just enjoy. Be that big kid and look at the wonders around us because God created it all. All right? So I just wanted to throw that out there because there's no platform to do it. And just be with your families. You know, schools are closing. Just enjoy the fellowship of being with the people you're with. And enjoy your day. My cousins are coming over tomorrow. Yay! Good, Andy. All right, and I think the last joy I'll share is this little booklet. It's called 10 Easter Reflections from Our Daily Bread. If you are interested in them, I placed them at the communion rail. Um, so if you want to take one, you're welcome to take one and uh, use it for some reflections. So as far as our concerns, you have a prayer list there in your bulletins. Um, I know we shared some joys. People still need prayers. There are prayers of people. We have an active prayer group, which is just absolutely phenomenal here. And uh, they meet every week, and they lift up every name. So just know that prayer works. And some of you have witnessed prayer in your own lives. So I see some in the back where prayers have really helped. So, continue to keep it up. Darlene? I think we need to have prayer for Mary Deere. Prayers for Mary Deere. Mary is in the hospital at this time. She really, really needs to have prayer. And she is, uh, actually was doing a little better yesterday. So I'll catch up with you later and give you her room number. Okay. I know. I'm going to scold you all lovingly in a minute. This is the second person I've heard about. And friends, I can't go and take care of people if I don't know about it. I didn't learn psychic abilities in seminary. So I love you, but I want to be able to help our parishioners. So let me know. I just want to ask for prayer for my sister Michelle. She had her gallbladder out this week, and well, she asked that you just lift her up and uh, for fast healing. That's all. Prayers for Michelle. Good. Thank you for lifting these folks up. Who? Oh, okay. Just push me out of the way because okay. I can't see you back there. Sometimes it's it's a little. Um, mysterious or a little wondering if, if we should say things, um, but I am who I am. Um, I just want to point, somebody pointed it out to me this last week, and I've been on kind of a mission Googling it and watching YouTube videos, but they are out there to look at the, the eclipse combining the 2017 one and, and tomorrow's 2024 in a biblical perspective. We are, prophecy is, is unfolding big time before us right now and I don't know as I ever really got that connection before so this is kind of a joy and a concern if you're interested Google it look it up and you'll be amazed at the signs and wonders that we are seeing right before us well let's be in an attitude of prayer <clears throat> Living God, thank you for this day. Thank you that we can continue this Easter celebration. Thank you for inviting people to sing and to share and to lead as a liturgist. Thank you for the ways that people step up, serve communion, go out and minister to those who are sick, and to know all of us are called to do that. I give you thanks for each and every person who heeds the call. And Lord, we thank you that we're still in Easter and for all those ways that you surprise us. My heavens, 
Your works are so good. And this world that we're in is so beautiful in spite of us. God, thank you for the moon and the stars and the sun and for all of your glory. You know, God, we thought all was lost during Holy Week, but now it's been found. And you have risen and have given us assurance. We believed that Jesus was dead, but learned he's now alive. We assumed he, his death was an ending, but now it's a beginning. And it's a beginning for us. Lord knows we need new beginnings. Somebody shout in this prayer, hallelujah, if we need a new beginning. Come on. Shout it out. We need new beginnings, Lord. Thank you. Just as you have resurrected your son from the death on Easter, we pray that you will resurrect our lives. Meet us in our anxiety and in our depression and in our stubbornness and in our human condition. Come into our hearts. Lord, please come into our hearts. Meet us where we are in our despair and resurrect us to hopefulness. Meet us in our wanting more. Meet us in our wanting to quit and resurrect us to the place where we want to go on. Meet us in our loneliness and resurrect us to community. Lord Jesus, take what is dead for crying out loud and all those things around us and make it new once more. Please, Lord Jesus, come into our hearts. I thank you, Lord, for the people who've had the courage to go and tell, what, and tell others what they saw on that Easter day. Allow us to do the same. We thank you for the first people to proclaim that you were raised from the dead, even in the midst of the people looking on with disbelief. Lord, we have gathered. We've lifted names. They're on our hearts. So hear every prayer. Help us, Lord, to continue to faithfully proclaim this Easter story with joy even when there is doubt and denial. Hear our prayers. And now we lift together the prayer that you taught us as a guide to pray to you by saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. It was late that Sunday evening, and the disciples were gathered together behind locked doors because they were afraid of the Jewish authorities. Then Jesus came and stood among them. Peace be with you, he said. After this, he showed, he showed, them, them, he, he showed them his hands and his side. The disciples were filled with joy at seeing the Lord. Jesus said to them, 
peace be with you. As the Father sent me, so I send you. Then he breathed on them and said, Receive the Holy Spirit. If, if you forgive people's sins, they are forgiven. If you do not forgive them, they are not forgiven. One of the twelve disciples, Thomas, called the twin, was not with them when Jesus came. So the disciples told him, We have seen the Lord. Thomas said to them, Unless I see the scars of his nails in, in his hands and put my finger on those scars and on, in my hand on his side, I will not believe. A week later, the disciples were together again indoors, and Thomas was with them. The doors were locked, but Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. Then he said to Thomas, Put your finger here and look at my hands. Then reach, out, then reach out your hand and put, and put it in my side. Stop, stop your doubting and believe. And Thomas answered him, My Lord and my God. Jesus said to him, do you, do you believe because you see me? How happy are those who believe without seeing me? In his disciples' presence, Jesus performed many other miracles which are not written down in this book. But these have, these have been written in order so that you may believe in Jesus is the Messiah, the Son of God, and that through your faith and that through your faith in him, he, you may have a life. This is the word of God for the people, people of, God. of God. Thanks be Thanks to God. Be to God. Thank you, Olivia. Wow, isn't she doing an amazing job? Go, Olivia. Well, happy Easter. It's good to see you. I never spend any time over here. This is where I'll glue myself, camera people. They always tell me it's hard to follow me because I move too much. Got my eyes on you. Isn't there a song like that? Got my eyes on you. Song for everything, right? There's an app for everything. So this Easter story is continuing journey, it starts right where we left off last Sunday, when everybody in here was in bonnets and suits, and the balconies were filled. Just go with it. Just go with it. There were a hundred choir members up there singing. I will say it sounded like a hundred. For a small choir, the sound is incredible. Let me just say that. But imagine Easter night after all the, after they heard Mary say, he's not here. Mm -mm. Can you imagine how frightened the disciples were? I would lock myself up in a room. Would any of you? No, I heard. Okay, well, you're brave. I would have done the same thing. And imagine them hearing Mary saying, I've seen the Lord, all right, I'm a leaving. Right? Even though they were supposed to go tell the good news that he had been risen. And I would imagine they suffered a little bit of PTSD. No? Maybe not? Maybe I'm misinterpreting scripture. Which wouldn't be the first time, let me just say that. But you better believe they were scared. And John tells us the doors of the house of the disciples were locked. <laughs> and guess who still manages to find his way in? <laughs> After Jesus was killed in such a brutal fashion, I can't even begin to fathom that for one. Brutal, brutal fashion. You better believe they were scared. Because the climate wasn't good. They were scared for their lives. They knew what the violence was like back then. They knew what was happening. And they wanted to shield themselves. Today, I, when Faith said, what's the title of your message? I'm like, I never figure out titles. I know, and I said, a class act. Now think about this. If you love theater, there's usually two acts most of the time with an intermission. 
I love theater. And generally, yeah, unless it's a one-act play, it's two acts, and you have an intermission. I see the Easter story being the first act. Wouldn't you agree? Old Testament times right up to the fulfillment? Heck yeah. And then we take a break. Go get some more extra popcorn, have a potty break, go get a drink, check your cell phone, check your iPad, check your computer, your laptop, your pager, if they even still exist. <clears throat> and then the lights flicker. And guess what? You gotta go find your seat. And then act two begins. God bless you. Sometimes there's music, and sometimes there's not. This is act two for the disciples. Doesn't that make sense? Yes. Trying to figure out how to piece this together for y'all. And that was, that's what makes sense to me. Now, your pastor has decided to audition for a character. Well, just a plain audition. For Carthage Little Theater, which I had to learn where Carthage was, and I figured that out. And I now know where the speed trap is. <laughs> Not that I got caught, because I didn't. I'm just saying, I, when you see 45 and you're going down a hill, you know that's a trap, right? <laughs> that's a given. Thank you, Jesus. And somebody warned me of that trap. <laughs> Thank you, Jesus, again. But I just, I got this part as a crazy Texan. <laughs> got to figure out how I'm going to ham this one up. And I got the craziest wife on earth, and they stuck us together. Gene Marshall's in this show. It's, it's Memorial Day weekend. But I'm looking forward to it. So, yes. I might miss a couple church meetings, so throw the stones now, because I don't want to hear a thing about it. You know why? Because when a pastor serves a church, you serve that community and around it. Now, the cast has no clue what I do, other than Jean, and she's kept it hush-hush. They, they usually find out the day of the show, because everything's written down. <laughs> then they'll see I'm pastor at Asbury. And then they'll go, oh, I'm sorry if I swore at all. <laughs> now you know why I don't tell them. But the second act is always exciting because it's getting closer to the end, for one, especially if it's a long, boring play or musical. So here we are with the disciples. So what are we to learn? You already heard most of my sermon because I shared it with the kids. So you're off the hook for that part. Because you already know, Thomas wasn't there. He showed up and he found out about the resurrection. If I were to tell you something, promise you're not going to think I'm crazy? I was waiting for these to start coming out. Now, my daughter will tell you, for 10 years, we lived in a haunted parsonage. They do exist. Now, mind you, until you learn they exist, you feel like you are going nuts. And you feel like, I need to go see a doctor. Because you see things other people don't see. And when you see a little train go across the living room or a candle floating in midair, you go, Jen, am I overtired or are you seeing what I'm seeing floating around the living room? Nope, I see it. And then I go to my niece, Cassandra, please tell me you see what I'm seeing because I feel like I need to go to bed. Oh, no, Uncle Mike, I'm seeing what you're seeing. Thank you, Jesus, because I want to make sure I wasn't going insane. There's no explanation why this would happen without a hand holding it and still flickering and going around in a circle and then being placed right back down. Now, why do I share that with you? 
because I could have left. I lived in this. I had people come in that were supposed to be ghost hunters. And they shared some, okay, you got to talk to them as if they're still there. What? When you go to the store, tell them you're going to the store. What? And when you leave, tell them not to mess up the house. What? She's a baby at that point. But friends, these things happen. I, had cler I have still have clergy that don't believe me, but they didn't live it. I had people that wouldn't babysit my kids because they'd see toys go across the floor and nobody moving them. Right? Wouldn't you think, you now think you've got an insane pastor. Tell me that's not what you're thinking. But you know what? Until you live it. <laughs> I'm seeing why the doorknob's moving. I now know why the phone dings for no reason. And I now know why showers happen at 2.30 in the morning, steaming up the hallway, and we're all in bed. How do you explain that, Asbury? Yeah, don't. I can feel for Thomas. <sighs> Lest I see it, I don't believe it. But here we are in Act 2. We know what's on the other side of Easter. <laughs> Somebody's still having some fun back there. Better not be sharing stories about me. I might look insane, but trust me, I'm not. I thought I was. Jesus does something I didn't notice till this week in that story. And I've heard this story for all my life. What did he say? That Did anything stick out about breath or breathing in that scripture? I have only heard of breathing the Holy Spirit in at Pentecost, when we celebrate Pentecost, but he said, I breathe, in the whole, I breathe the Holy Spirit. I never picked that up. So what does that tell me about Act 2? We're on, people. We are on stage to share the good news, whether we want to or not, because he breathed in the Holy Spirit to those disciples. That was my aha moment this week. The Lord is calling us right now. Don't you hear the phone? <laughs> I, could, I could not have planned that. <coughs> Holy cow, that was timing. Oh my, we are done. I don't even know how I could come up. I don't even know how I could even end that. <laughs> That's it, gang. We're done. <laughs> All right, so I, we can't compete with a phone, Olivia. You and I are outcasts, you know? Oh, wait, you don't have to do the offering thing. Do, oh, that's right. Oh, I messed you up, Olivia. You know what? She's so patient. She could have said, Pastor, there's no offering here. Because I gave her this fancy thing to tell you. You know what? Still tell it. Tell the fancy thing, and then I'll tell them when to bring their offering up. Okay, Spirit, we got you. <laughs> or you don't need to. That's God's way of saying we don't need it. I found it. We have been called to witness our faith. We have been called to do so with joy and praise, with hearts full of thanksgiving for all that we have received. Let us commit ourselves and our resources to, ena to enable the church to be that fearless witness. Let us give our morning offerings and tithes. Yep. So what she said is not something we're doing today because when you come to the table, we're bringing ourselves. And that offering that she spoke about is what you'll bring down and just place in the plates and then we'll say our prayer afterwards for the offering. So I wanted you to have that reminder 
and um, thank you, Olivia, for doing that. But let's turn now to the great Thanksgiving for Easter, because this is our time. I didn't want anything long and lengthy, so you're lucky. <laughs> I could have dragged it out, but I didn't. Let's join together. Christ is risen, Asbury. Christ is risen indeed. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let you give thanks and praise. There's all to give thanks and praise. It is right always and everywhere to give joyful praise to you, our gracious Lord, who through your spirit anointed Jesus of Nazareth to tell your good news of grace and love through his life, death, and resurrection. Hallelujah. Break open the tombs of our lives by your earthquake and lightning that we may know your power and take courage from Christ's resurrection to live new lives without the cell phone. Hallelujah. Grant us the fear and hope of the Marys as they heard the angel's word. Christ was not in the tomb. Christ is risen. Christ will go before us into the world. Pour out your spirit of the resurrection on us and on these gifts of bread and cup, that we may experience newness in our own lives and bear your good news to the world. Hallelujah. Thanks be to you, God of creative newness. Thanks be to you, Christ reborn among us. And thanks be to you, comforting and challenging spirit. Thanks, thanks be, be to, to you, you, holy God, God three in one. one. Hallelujah. Amen. You know I love you, Asbury, right? I think you yeah. figured that out by now. God loves you too. And God wants to share this gift of bread and cup. And I took my mic off, so I guess I'll have to scream to <clears throat> present this to you. But the body and blood of Christ is given for you. Here's the difference this week, okay? Because people have lives, people are busy, things are forgotten, right? Right. It happens in church. So we have regular white bread, soft and delicious, so you know. But we also have gluten-free crackers. If you need gluten-free, just take it off the plate. I don't think we have tongs. So please touch it, take it. That's what we used to tell the kids in Head Start. You touch it, you take it. Um, but anyway, this is gluten-free. So you'll see the gluten-free crackers and regular bread. Everybody understand that? Yes. Okay. The body of Christ given for you and the cup of salvation. I like to call it a cup of love given for you. Friends, the United Methodist Church welcome everyone to the table. You're welcome to bring your offerings, drop in the collection plate. The ushers will lead you down once we're done serving our leaders. So if leaders, if you could just automatically come forward, um, who are going to serve communion, I would appreciate it. Whoever I serve first. Got gotcha. y'all, we're teamwork. Thank you. Come forward, don't be, don't be shy. Get a little closer, we're an extra guy. <laughs> the body of Christ. Given for you. Oh, thank you, Lorraine, we do have tongs, okay. You don't have to touch it, take it. One always has to break the rule. Take me the body of Christ. In the blood of Christ. Cup of love. Take a drink and be blessed in all that you do. Hallelujah. 
Love you all. Who's next? Next up. And then we'll have music, and then that will move us. And friends, I'd also, you know, if you need to kneel at the altar for prayer, you're welcome to do that too, because sometimes that's nice. Sometimes we can do that in the church, believe it or not. Okay, okay. That's fine. Other people had different plans. It's okay. The Lord moves. Friends, there's no certain way to do communion. I know we like to be, you know, as professional as we can, but God knows our hearts, and that's more important than that. We serve communion. Take and eat the body of Christ, which is given for you, and take the cup of love, that is given for you, and drink it and be blessed as it nourishes your soul. Be and take this second act, make it the best it can be. Take and drink with God's help. Go in God's peace. Amen. And the ushers will lead you forward. Brochures for you to get. <laughs> Welcome to our past, not the bread.
come on, come on, gather down. Yes, friends, whatever you do, come when you come to the table, you don't have to kneel if you can't kneel, because don't do that to yourself. You're at the table, that's all God wants. Perfect. The body of Christ is coming around to you. Simple bread, but a reminder of that one loaf, the body of Christ, which was shared with everyone at the table. All about the love of Christ coming to you. Take and eat the body of Christ, which is given for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Now the cup is being brought forth. It's a little cup, right? You don't get a lot to drink. You can't put some ice cubes in it. But what it's full of is the Spirit that leads you right now in this place. Jesus said, I will never, ever leave you nor forsake you. And man, is that the truth? So true. Take and drink the blood of Christ given for you. The cup of love. Love that says, you might have hard times, but I'm there to see you through. Take the love of God in your heart and go in this love and peace. You are so welcome. You're so welcome. You're welcome anytime.
do so. You're receiving the body of Christ. Body that was brutally put to death. So you can be right here, right now. Take and eat the body of Christ, which is given for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. And now the cup, which is brought forth to you. Jesus truly is the fruit of the vine. No matter how shriveled up we, can, we become, Jesus is still right there to be the head of it all to give us life. Take and drink and let new life be brought forth into you. You are precious in God's eyes. Go forth and share the good news. Be in peace. Amen. God, we thank you for this mystery in which you have given yourself to us. Grant that we may go into this world in the strength of your spirit to give ourselves for others in the name of our risen Christ, Jesus the Lord. Amen. Let us pray for the offering. In offering all that we are and all that we have to you, we witness our faith and pledge our commitment to you and to your world. We do so with praise and thanksgiving for your steadfast love and sustaining grace. May the gifts we bring before you hope a very endowed world. Amen. Before Olivia announces the hymn, this next one I really want you to know a little history on. If you notice, it was written in 1882 by Louisa Steed. She was just a simple wife of a husband who did mission work. Well, had, was a business doing, you know, service. And she had uh, uh, two children. Anyway, they were by the seaside, and they saw a little boy drowning, and her husband and her son went in to try to save the little boy and they all died. So Louisa and her daughter were homeless. The church would give them meals. And they ended up, she ended up writing this in the midst of her pain, "'Tis so sweet to trust in Jesus." And then they became missionaries, her and her daughter. They became missionaries and served Christ even in the midst of that tragedy. That is not a great end to a second act. I don't know what is. So this is where this song originates, and it just speaks to my heart, and Olivia will announce it to you. Our next hymn is Tis So Sweet to Trust in God, number four, 462.
Happy Easter, Asbury! We're in the second act. Are you ready for it? Yes, we are. So as you go forth today, may the blessings of God, who's overcome death, strengthen you in ways you've never been strengthened before. And may you go through this week knowing you're giving the good news and following the risen Christ. Go in God's peace and grace, and until we meet again, may God hold you in the palm of God's hands. Amen.